Hi, and welcome to my weekly Torah thought for the Torah portion of Kitisa. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Every so often, I hear the words Hasid and hipster in the same sentence. And recently, I've been getting tons of compliments on my beard. I've had my beard for as long as I can remember. Uh, some people actually believe that I've had my beard since I was born. Though it seems that we Hasidim have started a recent wild trend and all sorts of people are growing out their beards and people asking me like, what kind of products do you use? Anyway, I won't get into that today. But what you've probably never associated with the word Hasid is the term convicted felon. However, many Hasidim that lived under communist Russia, believe it or not, were just that. But what was their crime? It was a very grave one. They refused to stop teaching and practicing Judaism. Any act of defiance by breaking Stalin's Russian laws was met with the same or worse punishments than a thief, than a murderer, than a spy would face. And often it was forced exile or a life sentence to a Siberian gulag or labor camps. Tragically, many of these people were never seen or heard from again. There was a very famous Hasid, I've spoken about him before, named Reb Mendel Futafas. And Reb Mendel continued to spread the tenets of Judaism and educate the next generation, despite these activities being considered under counter-revolutionary and against the law. Like many others, Reb Mendel was punished and served a sentence in Siberia for a decade and a half of his life, 15 years. Miraculously, he eventually escaped Russia. And for many years, until he passed away in 1995, Reb Mendel would share stories and lessons, which he called from the diverse assortment of people he had met along the way, every encounter that he had with each of these people, for him, was a lesson in his divine service. And Remendo will learn something from everyone. At one Farbrengen, which is the Hasidic version of uh, a soul or, or frat gathering, Remendo shared an anecdote. He said, life in a forced labor camp looked the same day in and day out. You were forced to wake up at four or five in the morning, and spend the entire day wood chopping or transporting coal or some other excruciating manual labor. And in the evening, you'd receive your daily ration of crusty bread and something that resembled soup. The day would be over and you would begin exactly the same the next day. The prison sentence was nothing like our prison system. Here, <laughs> it's a whole different story. I mean, there was no gym, no entertainment, no rights. In short, it wasn't even a Motel 6 with a gate around it. Occasionally, at the end of a long and brutal day of grinding labor out in the Siberian snow, the inmates would take the edge off by playing a game of cards. It was illegal because this particular assortment of criminals from across the spectrum of the Russian society were not there because they were, let's say, upstanding citizens. And so, on the occasional evening, they would break another rule. They'd play a few rounds of cards. Mendel recounted that something strange would occur. Inevitably, at some point in the game, heavy footsteps of the Russian guard could always be heard coming down the hallway. And in a flash, the cards were scooped up. And as the door opened, the deck would magically disappear. The guard would proceed to shout, to search, to harass the inmates, looking for what he knew they had, but could never seem to find the deck of cards. And in so turning up empty-handed, he would dejectedly stomp out, slam the door behind him, and no sooner did his footsteps echo down the hall than the cards would reappear and the game would resume as if it had never been interrupted. Mendel would observe this happening time and again. And one night, his curiosity got to the better of him. He approached one of the ringleaders, let's call him Ivan. And he said, I'm a prisoner here with everyone else. And yet, I have no idea what happens to those cards. Can you, please, can you explain to me 
what happens when the guard arrives? <laughs> Ivan laughs. He explains to Reb Mendel that we're not your common criminals. We're in Siberia because we're the best in the business. We're good at what we do. He shared with Reb Mendel the great secret. You see, he says, as the guard steps into the room, we slip the cards into his large cargo pocket on the side of his very own pants. He can search whomever and wherever he wants, but he has never found anything because he doesn't look in the place where the cards are sitting all along. He never thinks to check his own pocket. Of course he gives up. And so on his way out, we unceremoniously retrieve the cards and maladets, which is Russian for job well done, or we say shkoyach or kolakavod. Reb Mendel shared the simple story, but he shared it with a profound lesson. Often in life, we search for meaning, we search for truth, we search for purpose. We can look far and wide and we can travel great distances and searching and far out pastures, not realizing that what we yearn for most deeply has been in our very own pocket all along, our heritage, our history, our faith, and our tradition. It contains a deep reservoir of answers, of solutions, of solace. We're blessed with so many pathways to discover the things that we value and we need most in our lives. The soul inside of us is accustomed to a tailored positioning system, maybe like a tailored GPS, which means godly positioning system. And it helps us navigate the often bumpy roads in life from an internal compass within. This week's Torah portion gives us a strong example of this game of hide and seek that we encounter in our lives. Shortly, shortly after receiving the greatest divine revelation in the history of the world, the Jewish people miscalculate the facts and they seek inspiration and leadership from foreign and misguided sources. This leads them to create and serve a golden calf. Had they only looked inside their own pockets and trusted with complete faith and hope, instead of searching for substitutes, this tragic saga of our people perhaps would have played out differently. So to you, I say l'chaim. L'chaim to each one of us, that we should have the wisdom, that we should have the strength to find the truth and the meaning that we crave and explore the beautiful heritage we've been gifted. We should also possess the faith to know that Hashem, that guy, that God guides us from the pockets within. We just need to listen to the voice within our soul that's guided by the cards or the pages of our guidebook, the Torah and its mitzvot. With that, I wish you Shabbat Shalom. Have a fantastic week, and we'll speak soon.